What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, or in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And on this, we've got a special episode. Not only is it an Easter edition, it is also the initial edition of Worship Wars. <laughs> That's right. It is a hotly contested issue still to this day. How is the church going to worship? And on the one side, you have the baby boomer generation saying it needs to be hip, cool, modern, relevant with the times. That's what the kids want. On the other side. You have those stuffy old, boring, traditional people who are saying, this is the way the church has always done it, and we need to keep doing it. right. What we're going to do is we're going to compare two songs, one praise song and one Easter hymn of the same theme to each other, and we're going to completely strip it down. This is unplugged. We are not going to be swayed in our emotions by a beautiful melody or by awesome guitar riffs. We are stripping it completely down. We are letting the substance stand alone. The lyrical content alone will be our deciding factor on what is better. Now, why do I get to sit and say something like this? Uh, being in my mid-30s with incredibly gray hair, how dare I talk about what the youth want? But you need to understand, I grew up in the worship wars. I was the target of this baby boomer generation that told me they knew better what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted. I just assumed maybe I should trust an adult. But over the years, after a couple of decades of this worship war raging, what we've come to learn objectively, it's not the youth that want this hip revival, uh, this modern way of doing it. It was all along the baby boomer generation that wanted it. And if you want it, fine. Go start you a new church. Those of us who want to do what the church has been doing for 2,000 years because it has stood the test of time, leave us alone. Oh, all the research shows this is what the youth want. Yeah, except for all the pupils are coming back saying that's not true. And that's how we know it's what the baby boomers wanted, not us. So bye-bye, baby boomers. Nice try. You lost. People have been trying to change the church for 2,000 years. You're no different than anybody else. But the church still stands. So let's take one of my favorite praise songs from when I was swayed by the boomers to go to one of those rock and roll churches with lighting and good sound systems and a praise band up on the stage and relevant to God only knows what decor behind. Heaven forbid there should be a cross at the, or a crucifix. When I went to one of those churches and it was Easter Sunday, this was my favorite praise song to sing. So we're going to compare that, my former favorite, to a hymn that I thoroughly enjoy and find incredibly beautiful, but it is not my top Easter hymn to sing on Easter Sunday. So let's compare My Redeemer Lives by Hillsong to the ancient hymn, well, ancient to the 1700s, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Now, in true uh, mainline American Protestant fashion, we have got to do this from an electronic device because if the kids go five seconds without seeing you on an electronic device, well, then you're going to lose all credibility with them. So I know, or yeah, so My Redeemer Lives by Hillsong. By Hillsong should be your first clue that it's going to be hot garbage, but we shall judge it by lyric alone. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe, I believe. My shame he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. 
I believe, I believe. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe, I believe. We just said this. Uh, My shame he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe, I believe. We just said this too. Funny how the people who love this song are the ones yelling at me about vain repetition of men when I pray a prayer that's an ancient prayer of the church. I'll raise a banner because my Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. 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 You lift my burdens. I'll rise with you. Is that a a reference to the resurrection? Because I'm going to have to say I don't know. Uh, And therefore, the gospel implied is the gospel denied. I'm dancing on this mountaintop. Of course, Hillsong is referencing a mountaintop experience. To see your kingdom come. My Redeemer lives. 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 And God have mercy on your soul if that worship leader is feeling the spirit and wants to run it through again. And they oftentimes do. So, welcome to the vain repetition of men, but it's okay because we're doing it with drums and guitars and it makes us feel good. Now, let's turn to the hymn that we closed out our Easter worship service with this past Sunday. Uh, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, written in the mid to late 1700s. And of course, we're going to do it this way too. We're going to do it out of the hymnal because this is how it's done. So, tech for the youth, because if you don't make a tech reference every 30 seconds, you're going to lose them. Uh, Hymnal for the Lutherans. Lutherans raise their hand in church. We raise our hands in church just as high as we can hold our hymnal. Although oftentimes we're not looking at it because we already know it. I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives who once was dead. He lives my ever-living head. He lives triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. He lives all glorious in the sky. He lives exalted there on high. He lives to bless me with his love. He lives to plead for me above. He lives my hungry soul to feed. He lives to help in time of need. He lives to grant me rich supply. He lives to guide me with his eye. He lives to comfort me when faint. He lives to hear my soul's complaint. He lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives all blessings to impart. He lives, my kind, wise, heavenly friend. He lives and loves me to the end. He lives, and while he lives, I'll sing. He lives, my prophet, priest, and king. He lives and grants me daily breath. He lives, and I shall conquer death. He lives my mansion to prepare. He lives to bring me safely there. He lives all glory to his name. He lives my Jesus still the same. Oh, the sweet joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Very different. Melodies, very, very different from my Redeemer lives to I know that my Redeemer lives. And links to both will be in the description below if you want to listen to both of them. Uh, But by lyric alone, it is my humble opinion that even though it's not my favorite Easter hymn, I know that My Redeemer Lives, written in the 1700s, is substantially better than My Redeemer Lives, banged out in five minutes by Hillsong to sell records. There's no substance to My Redeemer Lives by Hillsong. Yes, there's this glorious, great opening about his blood covering our sin. There's a vague reference to rising again with him at that glorious twinkling of an eye moment at the resurrection. But does it come right out and say it? Or does uh, does I know that my Redeemer lives? Talk about why Jesus lives. He lives for me. 
He lives to plead for me. He lives to guide me. He lives to feed me. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives, and because he lives, the definitive statement, I will conquer death. The glorious hope that we as Christians have is not that we get to die and go to heaven. It's that our bodies will be raised from dead, the dead, and we will live in a new heaven and a new earth for all of eternity with Christ. I know that my Redeemer lives, while not my favorite Easter hymn is substantially better than what was my favorite praise song to sing on Easter Sunday when I was a funda Baptist or a mainline American Protestant and not a conservative, confessional, orthodox Lutheran. So if there's any songs that you'd like to see compared one to the other, drop a comment in the, in the comment section below. Who do you think won? Which song is better and why based on lyrical content alone? We're stripping away the glitz and the glamour and we're going straight for the substance. And I'll tell you why this is important. Uh, as we learned a week ago on Easter Sunday, uh, the church continues to be persecuted and God's saints in Sri Lanka who were killed simply for the crime of worshiping the risen Lord. 300 dead. 300 Christians killed in one day for the sole purpose of that they were Christians. So while mainline American Protestantism is telling us revival is coming, revival is coming, no, persecution is coming. Hard times are coming. Great tribulation is coming. And the early church that was out of the catacombs where they had to hide and worship because it was illegal, we will be driven back into the catacombs before the Lord returns to worship secretly and outside of the world's knowledge. The world having completely thinking that they've defeated us, but Christ promises that there will be a small remnant left of his church before the end. Now, why is this relatable to comparing praise songs to hymns and, and modern ways of worshiping to ancient liturgy? Because those of us, as I mentioned earlier, who hold our hymnals up in church but scarcely look at it, nothing is going to change for us. The liturgy, in, in, at least in the Lutheran church, is 99% just direct quotes from the word of God, and it's ingrained here and here. It can never be taken away from me. I have it memorized. When this persecution comes, they cannot take that away from me. I have it in here, and I have it in here. They can't take it away. But those poor Christians who have been sold a, a bowl of evangelical pottage and told that their worship means nothing unless they get those little godly goose pimples while they're singing. I pray for them. I want them to endure the great persecution. I want them to fight the good fight, to run the race. I want them to make it. But I'm nervous because I've done it for years and I know that they're built on a shaky foundation of sand. Yeah, it's fun and entertaining to bury your toes in that sand, but if you're not actively engaged in building a house on the rock when the storm comes, that's why this matters. That's why the worship wars matter. So thank you for tuning in to 1517 Films, Easter edition of Worship Wars. Hope to bring you more soon. Let me know what you think of the concept of Worship Wars or how we could tweak it to make it well, I mean, it's YouTube, man. It can be a little bit entertaining. So let, let's meet in the comment section. We'll talk it through. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.